I made the academic connection between mathematics and music in 2004. I knew it was the 40th anniversary of the Beatles movie A Hard Day's Night uh, and uh, I would tried to play the opening chord from that song. It's a famous chord and uh, I'd had no luck over the years. I noticed the same was true for other people, even uh, professional musicians. Um, everyone had their own way of playing the chord and there didn't seem to be any rhyme or reason for deciding what notes were in the chord and what notes weren't. And so I decided at that point, well, there should be some science behind it. There should be some mathematics behind it. Well, I think I always was inclined mathematically from a very early age um, and uh, I, I began learning violin when I was th four or five um, but then when I was 12 I heard my first Beatles record and that was the end of all other instruments except guitar and I taught myself guitar and uh, then I went to university and I had to choose whether to continue to play music in bars at night or go through for mathematics and I took the safer gig which was mathematics. But later on in life, things come around. To begin with, we're going to play an example of the blues for you. But to do it, you've got to do it correctly. OK. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet. Play some chops. Uh, it was it was a blast to see. How often do you get to see uh, a, a prof up on the stage wailing away on on his axe? It was a lot of fun. The epiphany was how mathematics is one reason for the explanation of the, the popularity and the high intensity and the energy of the blues. The maximally even property saying if you take an event and divide it up into 12 units and have a beginning, a middle, and an end, the only way you can distribute the excitement results in the blues. I, just, I was just blown away. <laughs> That's what I came away from the evening with, just that amazing a uh, description of how one possible reason for the creation of the blues had to do with mathematics. I, I love it. And of course, this guy Brown was a very exuberant, charming guy, wasn't he? He really enjoyed his subject and his talk. And fortunate for me, about 10 years earlier, I had read um, about Fourier transforms, which is the mathematics that allows you to decode uh, a chord into its component frequencies. And that was the beginning of trying to unravel the mystery of the opening chord of A Hard Day's Night. One, two, three, four. It's been a hard day's night, and I've been working like a dog. It's been a hard day. I should be sleeping like a lung But when I get on to you I find the things that you do What made me feel I'm alright The event tonight has just been I feel like I'm at, on an island somewhere that's very expensive and I, I, I really didn't pay enough to come here and I, I really should donate a little more money. This is really well done. It's, again, the people are, are interesting people and they're interested in knowing more. And that's what uh, I find it really You know I feel I'm alright. You know I feel Thank you.
Well, when I was studying the chord for Hard Day's Night, I didn't know if it would pan out. And so I ran the part of the opening chord through the Fourier transform, and I got 30,000 frequencies. And it was almost too much to bear at that point, trying to decode that. And, uh, but I began to unravel it by looking at the relative loudnesses of each one of the tones that make up the chord. And that was something that I could tell from the Fourier transform. But I ran into a problem where the notes simply didn't fit to George Harrison's guitar, 12-string guitar. And even if I added in Paul McCartney's bass and as well John Lennon's guitar, there was still a problem. I couldn't fit the notes to, his, uh, to the instruments. And so I almost gave up at that point. And one night, as I was drifting off to sleep, I had an aha moment where I realized perhaps an assumption that I had held for a long time that there were only the Beatles playing on that opening chord was incorrect. Perhaps there was another instrument. And that began uh, the process of unraveling the chord once I realized there, there might be another instrument, and if so, it was likely a piano. Let's see, you, you've got some of the best minds in the country, if not the world, and you also happen to have some of the best teachers, all wrapped up, wrapped up into one. Great topics, very exciting things, and um, just always engaging, I guess. That's what brings me back. <laughs>